Well, hello and welcome everyone to Market at Midday, streaming to you live from Spotty Connect for this Thursday, the 7th of April, 2022. And today, of course, it is our casual Thursday and we've decided to invite a guest onto our show. Now, remember, folks, we don't ask our guests for money to appear. We purely have them come on because, well, they've got an interesting story to tell and can uh, possibly add some value to the community. So today we'll be talking to a relatively new entrant into the Australian research space uh, in order to, in order, I should say, to learn more about their business and really how they help investors every single day. And don't worry, yes, we're going to get a stock tip or two as well. Please, everyone, can you join me in welcoming uh, Delina Basson from Bay Research uh, to the program? Hello, Delina, how are you doing? Hi, Elio. I'm doing very well and hope you're doing the same as well. Thank you so much for inviting me to the show and hope I will be able to answer all your questions today. I'm very excited. <laughs> now, well, look, the good news is it should be relatively easy because we'd like to shine the spotlight on your business and what it is you do, because uh, for many of us, um, uh, it's not necessarily it's an emerging name, but it's not one that uh, many of us may have um, heard of before. So. Delina, what, before we go into the company, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background um, and, um, and the role that you play at um, Vaya Research? Uh, sure. So thank you for asking me that question. And I would talk about myself and what do I do at VI. Uh, I'm an expert into financial resources management from London Kingston University. I have been certified through Australian educational professionals into RG146 securities. I have been actually into the industry for a pretty good long time at WEI. I'm working as the business head, wherein I took two different clients every now and then to improve their investment results through our unbiased and precise based recommendations on what to buy, what to sell, what to hold on to. And our main objective over here at WEI is to empower our online subscribers in achieving their financial ambitions through our expertise, innovation, excellence, and service. And to add, we currently have 10,000 plus subscribers and we have been into the business um, since 2018, so almost four plus years now. And we are actually working towards different segmentations and every day trying to help out our online subscribers to get the best of the recommendations as per the general advice. Well, let's talk about the um, services you offer because of course there are many different types of reports that um, you have. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have the website um, up on screen so everyone mm -hmm. can see it. But um, why don't you take us through the different types of reports that you prepare um, and how they differ and what the objective is of uh, each one? Sure, Elio. So I would like to say at WEI, we offer six forms of different reports. So these have been categorized and titled as Dividend Investor and Stock of the Week report, the very first report. Each week, we cover a company which offers a good combination of growth and dividends. And if I talk about the investors and the online subscribers, they're very much reliable and they depend on the dividends for the future capital gain and for the ones who are specifically retired or are seeking the retirement cycle. It is a key idea in many of the portfolios to have a balance between these kind of potential cash cows that we talk about, which is categorized as a cash cow companies compared to a rising star or question mark longer shots with higher risk and higher possible returns. So we help the investors pick a company which offers a good regular dividend and a lower risk capital growth opportunity. Then, we do provide with masters of growth as second report. So if an investor has a high risk appetite, they may go ahead and prefer to invest in companies that have a scope for high potential returns. After all, greater the risk, greater the reward is true for the stock market as well. Then I would say we do provide you with a penny stock to our investors where we tend to focus on the speculative 
uh, you know, stocks, the speculative buy stocks. And this is the specialization that we are into because we're not just specifically uh, working only on the blue chips, mid caps. We do go ahead. We look upon the nano and the micro as well, which is a tedious task for the in-house researchers and the scientists at we are however we are very skillful at it and adept so we offer the penny stock report as well for the investors who are looking to go ahead and start uh you know investing into the stock market with a low income and make it big for themselves in the near future then we do provide with the hot sector report and that's one of the interesting reports that i really love and i have seen subscribers talking to me about it because WEI has combined the basic principle of either a pioneer, I would say, or the best in this report that we try to bring out from all the sectors, the different sectors, as per the global industry classification standards, which can be anywhere limiting to 10 to 11 sectors. So that's a big, big uh, win for the investors. And the emphasis can be from a sector which is either prospective or currently in demand. Then we have a report which focuses on the U.S. market and the Nasdaq and even the New York Stock Exchange. So I would say this is uh, our U.S. equity opportunity report. Now, this report provides our fundamental and technical view on stocks, mainly listed on the Nasdaq. We cover such stocks which are offering an opportunity to invest and have the potential to outperform over the time. As U.S., we know, is a leader in technology and world's leading companies like Google, Microsoft, Tesla, Apple, Facebook, and Amazon, they're listed at NASDAQ. Now, it offers Australian investors the convenience to explore openings for investment in such stocks. Then I would come down to our last report, which is the healthcare panorama. And healthcare is one of the defensive sector, which is the best sector during the time of the COVID-19, uh, when the industries have been uh, going here and there, suffering all the depths during the different waves of COVID-19. Healthcare has been defensive. Healthcare has always been dominant to the global economy, though in recent time, it has assumed a vital role in the pathway to economic recovery. This in turn can provide pressing opportunities to investor. And every fortnight, if I talk about it, our team is guided by an expert on healthcare, uh, scanning the most opportune you know, openings for investing in healthcare IT. That's an area I usually like. If I talk about hospitals, providers, medtech, multilaterals, pharma, Biotech Australia has more than 500 plus biotech companies and they have done really well during the time of COVID and diagnostic sectors as well. So with the combination of all these reports clubbed together, we try to focus on our premium services for our value-based investors. Mm. I okay, hope so, I've answered your question on our yeah, reports. No, no, Elena. you have <laughs> exceptionally well. Of course, uh, some people may very well wish to explore uh, themselves uh, with regards to how to do that. Um, what you'll now see on screen is a little bit of a login form. Now, um, I have uh, figured out there is a workaround uh, in regards to this, and uh, it's okay, Delaney, your boss has approved me for doing this. If anyone is to click sure. on any of the uh, reports uh, or any of the um, things on screen at uh, vie.com.au, um, vie.com.au, if you click on any of those reports, you'll come to a login page. What I want you to do is scroll down to the bottom of that login page and you'll see there's something that says not a member, register now. Now, if you click on this, everyone, uh, there will be a, a little screen which appears. There we go, where you can actually get a free report into three dividend and growth stocks uh, that you must not miss, according to the team at VI. So. By all means, if you do have the time and inclination, please go to the website, bi.com.au. You can see it there on screen at the moment. And, um, yep, you can download this little report and see what stock tips um, you know, may very well interest you for the many months ahead. Of course, we are already in the month of April, but that still gives you a, a good nine months of return. Fingers crossed uh, that the market continues to behave itself as well. Um, look, uh, Delina, uh, let's go into some of the stocks that the team at VI 
do like, this will be a good opportunity for everyone to get a taste of the way that you guys uh, analyze stocks and how you look at them. Uh, just before we do that, though, uh, Delina, I need to remind everyone, of course, that all the information in this presentation today is of a general nature only. None of it takes into account your personal objectives, financial situations or needs, and therefore, should you decide to act on any of it, you need to do so in light of your own personal circumstances. Past performance is no indicator of future performance. I need to remind you of that. And if you wish to speak to anyone other than your significant other in life about any of this content in today's presentation, then you need to do so with an advisor that's licensed to have that conversation with you. But Delina Bassens come on board today from VI Research in order to share some of the house picks um, and some of the stocks that they're watching at the moment and why they're interesting stories. So Delina, let's get um, straight into it. I want to talk about the first stock, Fortescue Metals, FMG. A well-known company here in Australia, of course, Twiggy Forest is a bit of a pin-up boy in terms of uh, leaders of companies having taken this business to become the big global business that it is today. Um, what's the view at VI in regards to uh, Fortescue? Are you fans of it and why? Uh, thank you, Elio. Yes, I would like to answer that question for you. So FMG, Fortescue Metals Group Limited, it's one of the interesting, um, you know, interesting uh, company over the last 10 years, Australia's iron ore exports volumes have doubled and China is the world's largest producer and a key export market for the Australian iron ore industry. So it accounts for around 80% of the Australia's iron ore exports and iron ore. If I talk about it, it's the largest source of export revenue of Australia worth about 150 billion in the year to june so the commodity is forecasted to be uh you know bringing in the revenue of about 113 billion by 2022 and 2023 and that's very very interesting and you know and we expect more from the stock so as the economies of the highly populated countries in asia as well continues to grow steel and iron ore will be in high demand so Australia is well positioned to be a key supplier of iron ore to these markets as our miners are low cost, reliable producers of high grade iron ore and outstanding operation performance across its supply chain together with the successful, I would say, integration of Elewana has contributed to iron ore shipments of 93.1 million tons. 3% higher than the very first half of the financial year 2021 and all processed. So I would also say Fortescue Future Industries, I would like to talk about it, which mm -hmm. is taking a global leadership in green energy. And that's a quite interesting area when I talk about green energy to the uh, online subscribers and green technology. Now with a vision to go ahead and make green hydrogen, that's quite interesting again the most globally traded seaborne commodity in the world and will be a key enabler towards decarbonizing FMG operations by 2030 and removing net emissions from the entire value chain by 2040. So the acquisition of WAE, it will provide critical technology and expertise in high performance battery systems and electrification and it will enable Fortescue to accelerate further and support the decarbonization of Fortescue's mining operation, as well as it's going to help to establish an important new business growth opportunity. So FMG, if I look at it, it has a P at 5.65x and ROE of 66.46%. It is well placed to its peer group and the overall bullish trend remains well intact and is expected to continue further with new leg of the upside rally in the midterm. And look, the other pleasing thing uh, was the uh, completion recently of its uh, senior notes raising, where it raised some $1.5 US billion, of which over half of that will be used towards its green energy strategy. So it's obviously putting its uh, money where its mouth is. It's uh, going to uh, put through its, uh, I think it's 150 million megawatts of uh, power at the solar energy um, plant there as part of the Pilgrim Energy Connect project that they're um, part of. And then, of course, there's the um, hydrogen project that um, Delina just spoke about. So, yes, Fortescue definitely in the mix there. Another company in the mix in the, uh, I suppose, uh, 
in somewhat the battery space, although it's not lithium, it's vanadium, it's Australian vanadium, actually, AVL is their code. Um, you wanted to talk about this one, Delina, because of course they've got their redox batteries, which are also vanadium-based batteries, so almost next generation as it were, although that's very early stages. But obviously they've uh, got their uh, um, particular project that they're looking to get off the ground. So what is it that the team like about AVL? Uh, sure, Elio, and you're very much right. And I would go ahead and say for AVL, behind China and Russia, Australia holds the third largest amount of vanadium in the world. So we've been always talking about lithium. However, we wanted to focus on vanadium this time for our online subscribers. And despite having the third uh, largest economic vanadium reserves globally, there are currently no operating vanadium mines in Australia. However, Australia is still well placed to capitalize on growing global demand for battery systems and the critical minerals associated with their production. With the energy storage market expected to reach almost USD 20 billion by 2027. So vanadium is a hard metallic element currently used in high strength, low alloy steel and is emerging as a critical battery storage commodity for its use in vanadium redox flow batteries and that's quite quite useful and very very interesting ideally suited to large grid scale storage solutions and the still uh, the steel market uh, currently consumes most of the world's vanadium production and if i talk about the vanadium uh, redox flow batteries they're anticipated to grow rapidly and this new demand is expected to reach 25,000 tons of vanadium and account for over 15% of global vanadium consumption by 2025. So AVL's uh, project um, is directly aligned with Australia's critical mineral strategy and is well positioned uh, for partnerships and offtake agreements with countries that are seeking a secure ultra high purity vanadium supply required for the vanadium, uh, you know, redox flow batteries specialty uh, i would say chemicals aerospace and defense and the avl with its unique product supply to tihansu steel that is cost effective to improve mill operational efficiency plan to produce approximately 900,000 that is tpa which is tons per annum as the unit for ferro titanium co-product now along with 11,000 tons per annum of V205 from its operation in Western Australia. So if I talk about ferro-titanium that our in-house researchers have been focusing on, it's actually an alloy of iron and titanium with between 10 to 20 percent of iron and 45 to 75 percent titanium and sometimes a small amount of carbon as well, which is used in steel making as a cleansing agent for iron and steel and it's highly reactive with sulfur, carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen which is going to be quite interesting with a market cap of 325.83 million for AVL, outperforming the index with one year return of 292 person. After trading at an all time high, the stock is under minor selling pressure, which is expected to settle down in the near term with stock witnessing pullbacks from the support areas for AVL. Yeah, although um, if I can just point to the chart there for AVL, everyone will notice that there has been two pretty heavy selling days uh, in regards to this, previously hitting a high of 10.5, now down to 8, so it's down over some 20%. The main catalyst for that news, everyone, was they released a bankable uh, feasibility study on their Australian vanadium project. And the real, look, it all looked pretty standard, 20 plus year mine life, as you'd expect, um, propensity or likelihood that it could possibly increase. But the thing that had everyone a little bit concerned was the equity internal rate of return or the um, IRR came in at 20.6%. So obviously it's gonna cost a little bit more than what most people thought in order to get it um, out of the ground. Um, yeah, so suffice to say it's very early days yet, but it had an extraordinary run as, um, uh, Davina said there, you can see that it just went uh, straight sky high. And uh, yeah, not surprising to see a bit of a pullback after such a rapid run. And particularly given that um, uh, the, bankability, uh, feasibility, the bankable feasibility study, which uh, yeah, unfortunately, well, was good, don't get me wrong, it was still good, but obviously at the nosebleed level, just needed to take a break. 
I do want to talk about this next stock here, though, um, if you don't mind. It's uh, Virtus Health, VRT. Look, it's a company that's currently under takeover um, speculation. Of course, it's gone into a trading hole today as Cap in, uh, CapVest has decided that they're uh, basically going to up the offer after BGH came out yesterday and said that they're going to buy all shares on market up to $8 anyway. So um, <laughs> they're sort of trying to circumvent the official takeover process. So what does the team at um, VI Research think in regards to VHT at the moment? And do you think there could be, um, well, there's likely to be a higher offer coming because the stock went into trading hole. But what um, is going to uh, likely occur after that? Will BGH be uh, enticed to go in for another swing? Uh, thank you. So I would like to go ahead and say we are T, um, if I talk about it, what is held, uh, has now received seven competing proposals to acquire voters from BGH and CapWest. Now, the latest on 6th of April 2022 was an unsolicited uh, announcement made by entities wholly owned by BGH Capital Fund of the intention to make a joint off-market takeover to acquire all of the fully paid ordinary share in Virtus. So the takeover offer is a cash offer of $8 per share for all the ordinary shares in Virtus, in which BGH does not already have a relevant interest. So now it will be interesting to see whether VRT accepts the offer or not. So the Virtus board is yet to evaluate the BGH takeover bid and the Virtus board in consultation uh, with its advisors will consider the BGH takeover bid and update shareholders in due course. So the Virtus, if I go ahead, if I talk about it further, is considering the BGH takeover bid and in particular whether it constitutes a superior proposal under the terms of the transaction implementation deed that Virtus has signed with an entity controlled by CapWest uh, Partners LLP and will update shareholders once it completed its review and compiled with its obligations under the transaction implementation deed. Virtus uh, notes that CapWest has matching rights under the transaction implementation deed with which Virtus needs to go ahead and comply. And uh, this is one of the stock which has done exponentially, uh, you know, really, really well for our online subscriber, for our inverters, uh, you know, for our series. Uh, because uh, over here, we've tried to pick up Virtus because of its increasing growth in ARF, which is to be productive diagnostics and day hospitals across the eastern states of Australia. And because of the biological needs and the improved availability and affordability of ARS, it's driving serious growth. Excellent. And thank you very much uh, for that. Let's go to a, another sector, um, though. And yes, of course, we'll wait and see what happens with CapBest's um, new offer on the back of their trading hold today. Um, let's have a look at VLS, if you don't mind, Vital Life Sciences. It's a tightly mm -hmm. held stock. It's uh, There's not that much available, but it is one that's piqued the interest of the team. Uh, perhaps you'd like to tell us a bit about it. Thank you. Uh, sure. So if I talk about Vita Life Sciences, we, as per the recent industry um, report, uh, the Australia pharmaceuticals market is expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 2.1% between 2021 and 2026 to reach uh, USD 28,750 million in 2026. Now, VLS is a healthcare company that is involved in formulating packaging, sales, and distributing vitamins and, and supplements, uh, outperforming the Australian market index with one-year return of 127.88%. The ongoing demand for complementary medicines across the key markets with a strong focus on brand enhancement and tapping further Australian and Southeast Asian markets will drive the future growth of the company. Now, health margins, if I look at it with ROA growth of 5.11 person year on year to 30.06 person, well above industry ROE of 14.14 person, uh, positions uh, it well placed among its peers and earnings projected to grow at a CAGR of 8.7 person between financial year 2022 and 2026 
and there's a retracement of 78.6% of the fall from its all-time high of $2.78 in June 2001, with stock pricing showing downside rejection. Indicate uh, the complete retracement of the fall to occur in the near term and open up a new leg of the upside rally in near to midterm. Yeah, and I mean, uh, I mentioned the tight register. Uh, one of the names that's on there, of course, is Vicky Teo, who's David's wife. David, of course, from uh, uh, of fame of uh, TPG and now uh, Tao Yu, of course. Um, look, the uh, stock doesn't trade much, folks, so you just got to make sure you keep an eye on that. It only trades on average $22,000 a day. But obviously, we know that the, uh, um, you know, the vitamin market as it is, uh, is one where you can get um, some pretty good traction and the connections that the tightly held register. I think that inside is only around 50% of the stock. So it's just one of those things. They're obviously pushing it quite hard and that's obviously been reflected in the price. Let's go to uh, a lithium play. Let's go to uh, Lake Resources, but it is a little bit, uh, or it tries to sell itself as being a little bit different than everyone else with its Karchi project. Let's uh, go into uh, LKE if you don't mind. Uh, sure. I would like to go ahead and talk about LKE, and that's been one of the really good performing stock for our investors. Australia produces around half of the world's lithium and is one of the second largest producer. So the two billion critical minerals facility announced in 2021 is already providing loans to the sector. Projects are assessing grants under the Modern Manufacturing Initiative and concessional finance throughout the Northern Australia Infrastructure Facility. Several lithium stocks are breaking out to near term, if not all time highs. Lithium prices continues to surge among strong market conditions. Recently, Lake Resources entered into a non-binding memorandum of understanding with a Japanese-based commodity trading company Hanwha Corporation Limited to provide for an offtake of up to 25,000 tons per annum lithium carbonate over 10 years with a minimum of 15,000 TPA LCE from the Kachi project to be priced at average quarterly benchmark market prices. Uh, LKE with a market cap of 2.85 billion as on um, you know, 6th of April has outperformed the index with one year return of 571.64% and that's fantastic. Trading at an all-time high, market restrict the momentum for some duration, and stock price might trade in a band before it witnesses upside breakout and continues with new leg of the upside rally for LKE. Yeah, and of course they did announce recently that their lilac demonstration plants being sent up from, uh, or sent down I should say, from California of course in the mighty USA, given that they pitch themselves as offering a disruptive lithium processing technology whereby they use less water as part of the project and as well reduce on the waste. So uh, definitely uh, um, something there. They did have a trading halt recently though because there was some wayward paperwork, but that seems to be by the by right now. Um, the last stock you want to talk about um, today is uh, LTM. Uh, ALU is their code. Um, interesting little company. A lot of our members have talked about it for quite some time and have been invested in it. But uh, what is it that um, excites the uh, team at uh, VI about this one? Uh, what excites the team at VI for ALU Ultium Limited? It's one of the Australian based multinational software company, very strong company that we believe in. The company is engaged in development and sales of computer software for the design of electronic products. It provides printed circuit boards, tools and cloud platform for the electronics industry. Its products include Ultium 365. Uh, Ultium Nexar, Ultium Nexus, Ultium Designer, and Ultium Circuit Maker. Ultium is the fastest growing EDA company with eight consecutive years of double digit growth and expanding margins. As per the industry research, the global printed circuit board market is expected to grow at a CAGR, which is the growth rate of 8.4% from 54.30 uh, billion in 2021. I would say to 58.87 billion in 2022. Uh, the market is expected to reach 71.58 billion in 2026 with a CAGR of 5%. And the demand for PCBs is further accelerated with the growing demand of EVs 
As per the research, the EV, I would say, is projected to account for 10% of worldwide passengers' car sales by 2025, growing to 28% in 2030 and 58% in 2040. And the growing demand of electric vehicles will propel the growth path for PCB2. So ALU with a market cap of 4.63 billion as of 6th of April 2022 outperformed the index with one year return of 29.96 percent ALU and ROE of 16 percent which marks a strong position among its peer and they have delivered a strong performance for the first half of the fiscal 2022. Momentum has returned to its core PCB business and the business model transition is going smoother than expected with minimal headwinds. Altium's Actopart business is performing at its all-time best and it's well positioned to capitalize on post-pandemic and market opportunities, maintaining the support levels at $32 and the stock is expected to witness pullbacks in the near term. Yeah, and uh, that said, though, we're very look at consensus earnings, incredibly strong double-digit earnings growth expected through uh, this year as they rebound quite strongly on the back of COVID disruptions, of course, which impacted them in the short term. Well, folks, uh, that's all we've got time for today. So on behalf of all of you, I just want to thank uh, Delina Basson from uh, VI Research for jumping on the show and telling us a bit about their business and some stocks to watch. So thank you very much, Delina. Thank you very much for Ilio for inviting me. No, that's okay. Thank you. Uh, and uh, that's all we've got time for this week, of course, folks. So um, remember, if you've got a question, just ask it in the app. We'll respond to it within the 24-hour time frame that we allotted to. But as you know, we get there much quicker more often than not. Um, until we chat again online, I'm Elio D'Amato. You've been watching Market at Midday on Spotty Connect. And together, we've been shining the spotlight on shares. Take care.